All right. Well, hey, this is Jonathan Dupree. Welcome uh, Sunday night. And for those of you who uh, maybe you're just hopping in the first time I used to teach a Sunday night class. I started this a long time ago, even when I had my own independent brokerage and it was all about helping agents uh, develop the fundamentals to build a successful real estate business. Tonight, I am going to be sharing how to put yourself in a position to crush it in 2020. And I'm going to be hopping back and forth between cameras. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, this tonight, this topic, so if you're just hopping on the Facebook stream or maybe you're on the Zoom, I'm kind of in between platforms tonight doesn't matter what industry you're in you will be able to take away some great ideas thoughts concepts and strategies that can help you as this is the time of year most people are really planning out what they want to do and what they want to accomplish as we're wrapping up 2019 and maybe you uh, were on target or on track to hit your goals or maybe you weren't and you're looking and you're reviewing and you go man you know i i really kind of I, I, there was a gap between me keeping my finger on the pulse of what was happening in my business and what my goals were and what really happened. And now I'm looking back and there are definitely a lot of uh, challenges or changes or uh, that I need to make or implement in my business so that I can move closer to where I want to be. And David Marsman, you, you don't even know how much I appreciate that message. Thank you so much for for sending that to me. Uh, so let's talk about this. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the right mindset. I'm going to cover three areas tonight. I'm going to cover getting in the right mindset. I'm going to uh, cover some specific thinking that you need to have. I'm going to cover goal setting, how to set some goals to set you up for success. And then we're going to wrap it up and I'm going to share with you how to create a simple growth plan for 2020 that you can use and you'll create one for each quarter. We'll talk about that in just a second. So that again, you position yourself for success. I was reading a book and, and it doesn't matter what, if you're in the real estate world, there are people in all over on this webinar tonight, but if you're in the real estate world, it doesn't matter what company you're with. There's a book that, that came out years ago called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. And in that book, there's this one line, that's all I'm gonna talk about tonight, is one line called Think Big, Act Bold. And so as you're setting your goals, I think it's really important for you to get in this mindset where you're thinking really big. You're thinking about what could be in your business, in your life, and then you act on that. The speed of growth in your business will always be determined by the speed of implementation. How quickly you take an idea and you implement it in your business, you use it in your business. And it's important that you think big and surround yourself in 2020, if you go, you know, I really need to increase the level of my thinking. I'm not thinking big enough. John Maxwell kind of says it a different way. He says, you need to raise your lid. If you want to increase your influence, then raise your leadership lid, increase your, your leadership ability, and you'll be able to increase your influence, meaning you will influence and empower and impact more people by working on your leadership skill sets. It's also been said a different way. It's been said, work harder on yourself than you do on your business. And if you do that, everything else will kind of fall into place. So I want to challenge you as you begin to plan out what you want to accomplish in 2020 that you start by thinking big and acting bold. I want to share a story about a good friend of mine. She was an agent and she was an agent for probably 10 years before we had this conversation. In that 10 year period, she had never done more than $2 million in volume. She had been stuck at that $2 million ceiling for 10 years. She was really talented. She was very uh, influential. She had a great market, but she just somehow couldn't break through $2 million. And we had a conversation and I said, Anna, tell me what your goals are. She said, you know, if I could just double what I did, if I could do $4 million in the next 12 months, that would be phenomenal. And I'll never forget this. I said, Anna, you are a $10 million producer disguised as a $2 million producer. And I want to challenge you to think bigger than doing four million because you're 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 capable of it. You're capable of much more. And she said, "Well, what if what if I don't hit the goal?" I said, "Yeah, but what if what if you come close?" And here's what happened in Anna's business: she began to think big, and she had what I call a perceptual transformation. This perceptual transformation is when you begin to see yourself as you're capable of becoming. And she began to see herself as she was capable of becoming. And Anna finished that 12 months from the time we had that conversation, 12 months later, she finished at $9 million. Now, some of you will go, well, she didn't hit $10 million in volume. 
She hit nine. Yeah, but her goal was four. Her goal was four. She never done more than two. Her goal was four million, and she did five million more than what her big goal was, all because she began to think big, and then she acted on that. She acted bold. There are two types of thinking that you need to adopt, and there are, the, the first is tactical thinking, and the second is strategic. I want to recommend a great book if you want to dive more into it. Uh, Tony Jerry wrote a book called Results Faster, and uh, he also wrote a book, he it goes into greater detail on this, called Strategic Acceleration. And in this uh, book, he talks about the difference between tactical thinking and strategic thinking. And so when you go, I need to think big and act bold, it's really important that you understand how to think correctly. So you need to have tactical thinking and strategic thinking, and you need to understand what time uh, of the day do I need to be tactically thinking? And what time do I need to be strategically thinking? How often do I need to be thinking tactically? How often do I need to be thinking strategically? And you go, well, what are the difference? Tactical thinking is short term and uh, it is uh, task oriented. You're, you're doing tasks, phone calls, lead generation, uh, talking to people, um, doing the, the, uh, the things, the little daily activities that drive your business forward. So it's short term and it's, it's task, it's uh, activities, it's all the little things that drive your business forward. Then you have strategic thinking and strategic thinking is planning, thinking, studying. Uh, this is long term and this is what really begins to help you have the big shift in the results that show up in your life is being able to think strategically. A lot of times we act on impulse and, and we don't think things through and we don't think things through for the long term. And so I want to really encourage you to adopt both thinking styles, tactical thinking and strategic thinking. And I think that this time of year is the perfect time of year for you to begin to adopt strategic thinking, for you to sit down and really be intentional about where you currently are in your business and where you want to be in your business. It's really important for you to, and not only your business, your life, where do you want to be personally? What are your personal goals? Where are you right now and where do you want to be? And then think strategically about how to make that happen, to study what you need to do, to be intentional about your thinking and your planning and your, your strategizing about where you're going and how you're going to make it become a reality. Now, there are a, a few different um, killers, I would call them, to uh, impacting your success or lack of success that shows up in your, in your world. And so when you think about that, the three enemies – of uh, meeting and exceeding your goals. If you look at this little stool, you'll see it says clarity, um, focus, and execution. But then I've written a few things here in red. And, and when you think about the enemies of meeting or exceeding your goals, uh, you've got an absence of clarity. If you don't have clarity to what you're trying to accomplish, meaning um, you, you're not clear on the vision of where you want to be, what you want your business to look like, what your goals are. If you don't have clarity to that, if there's an absence of clarity, you're going to struggle and the results aren't going to show up. You see the stool and here are the results. And if one of these legs is gone, the stool is going to fall. And so you have to make sure that you bring clarity into the picture. The second enemy of meeting or exceeding your goals is a lack of focus, a lack of focus. When you say, what are you talking about? Think how distracted we are today. I mean, just, just think about our day-to-day -day lives. All kind of things distract us from doing what is most important. And when you're thinking strategically, you're thinking tactically, and all of a sudden there's no focus there, it's very difficult for you to be intentional and it's very difficult for the results that you desire to show up and you will end up frustrated. I mean, just think for a second about um, you strategically plan out how you're going to prospect for your business and lead generate. And yet you're not focused when you go in to tactically do it, to do the activity, to uh, take action on that and implement it. And you're scared and you're thinking about the all the negative things that pop in your head, the limited beliefs, 
that pop in, the self-doubt, the lack of confidence. And all of a sudden you lose focus and you, you, you go, you know what, instead of making calls, I'm going to pick up my phone and, and I'm going to make a post on Facebook and I'm going to scroll through and see what people are doing. And you distract yourself to trick yourself to, to make sure, and we'll talk about that at the end, self-delusion, into thinking that we're doing something in reality, we're, we're working to avoid doing what we know that we need to do uh, more than anything else. And so a lack of focus will absolutely um, make it difficult for you to meet or exceed your goals in 2020. So I want to challenge you to go into 2020, to go into 2020 as focused as you, you can be. Go into 2020 with a commitment to your business, a commitment to your personal goals, your business goals, to attack them with this sense of urgency and intention uh, and clarity like you never have before. And then finally uh, is poor execution. Poor execution. I shared with you earlier that the speed of growth in your business will always be determined by the speed of implementation. And while it is really important for you to, um, to take action, and I don't believe that is important for you to, to be, take perfect action because if you are waiting until you can take perfect action, then you're going to be waiting for a long time. Uh, so it's important to take action. However, it's important that you execute with a strategy in place. It's important that you've thought through that strategy. It's important that you have a plan in place and you're aware of both your strengths and your weaknesses and how you work with both your strengths and your weaknesses. It's important that you have clarity to the plan. It's important that you then execute that plan with excellence on a consistent basis every day, day in, and, and day out. So it's really important that you have a clear vision. So we talked about clarity. It's important that you have a clear vision. It's also very important that you outline when you're creating your goals, your priorities and your objectives. You've got to understand uh, what are, what are the 20% uh, activities that generate 80% of the results, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. What are the 20% activities I need to do that are going to generate 80% of the results, whether it's in business or whether it's in personal? That helps you to ultimately really quickly discover these are my priorities, you know, lead generation in my business. If I don't have enough leads coming in to meet or exceed my goals, then I have a lead generation problem, and I need to make that a priority not just lead generating, but making sure that I have a solid strategy and I've thought through it strategically and tactically and I have a plan that I'm going to execute with excellence and I'm going to be laser focused on it so that I not only meet my goals, but I exceed my goals. So you've got to have a clear vision. You've got to outline your priorities and your objectives. And also, there's a great tool that uh, someone shared with me. This is so simple. We overthink this stuff all the time. Uh, I'll never forget uh, someone shared with me, could do and should do. And so every day for the longest time, I would wake up and just take a piece of paper and I would list all the things that I, I could do, you know, all the things I could do that day. And I looked at that list and I would circle the items that I should do. And I moved those over here and I made sure to do those items First, before I did anything that I could do, I did everything on the list that I should do. Just a real simple exercise for you to begin to gain clarity and, uh, and have focus in your business and prioritize. That's what you're doing. You're prioritizing. You're saying these are the things that matter most. Whether it's business or personal, you want to have better relationships. Uh, you want to do better financially. Uh, you want to get out of debt. You, you, you want to build your business uh, at a high level. Whatever it is, you should have uh, nailed down the 20% activities that are going to generate 80% of the results in that area. And then prioritize and, and use the could do, should do so that you can look at it real simple and go, okay, here's, don't, don't make, don't overcomplicate this stuff. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Don't overcomplicate it. We are experts at overcomplicating it and making this stuff really, really difficult. And then finally, the last thing I want to share before I go into uh, how to actually set goals and give you a model to use that's super simple. I'm reading an, a phenomenal book right now, 
and I would encourage you to pick up a copy. It's called Million Dollar Habits by Robert Ringer. And in this book, he just shares some gold, great stuff that he shares in here. But one of the things that he says, I wrote down in my journal the other day, and it's to avoid self delusion. And I think it's important for you to grasp this before we move into the goals, because a lot of times we set goals, but then we're not really um, course correcting. We're not looking at where we are and where we want to be and what changes do I need to make and what should I keep doing? What should I stop doing? And here's what he says. We often get hung up in our own hype about our projects that we simply refuse to acknowledge any facts that fly in the face of our desires. Human beings, by and large, do not want to hear the truth. Rather, they try to make true that which they love. Who needs truth if it puts you out of business? We would much rather delude ourselves by ignoring the facts even if, if we're only prolonging the inevitable. In doing so, we guarantee disastrous long-term results. Wow, that is powerful. I, I read that and it was so impactful. Uh, I, I, it's, I would pick up the book and I would read the book Million Dollar Habits. But it's important for you as you set goals that you don't fall into self-delusion, meaning that you are, you, you're acting like, the facts don't matter. You know, if you're, if you have a goal to have a certain amount of transactions or earn a certain amount of income or, or uh, build better relationships with people is one of your goals or be increasing your communication skills, whatever it is. And you're tracking, see what gets measured gets improved. And if you're not tracking, you don't know how to course correct and what changes you should make. And if you're not every day and every week evaluating what's going right, what's going wrong, what should I continue doing? What should I modify? What should I stop doing altogether? If you're not doing that, at least on a weekly basis, then it's easy to fall into the trap of believing that what you're doing is working because you don't want to hear the truth, which is, uh, you know, maybe you're not doing the necessary things that you have to do for the results to show up. So own the results, take responsibility for where you are and take responsibility for setting a plan and a pathway to move you forward, to move you to where you want to be. And finally, let's talk about actually setting goals. And before we move into um, the I'm gonna set goals and then create a growth plan, it's important that you, you uh, master your skills. And I think when you're setting your goals, you need to, to begin to assess your strengths and your weaknesses. I would do what's called a SWOT analysis. Uh, if you've ever been around any sales training, I'm sure that you've seen, seen that. And all a SWOT analysis is, is where you basically um, say, what are, my, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my challenges? Well, let's do uh, opportunities. And then what are the threats, the threats to uh, my industry? Th and, and when you look at it, threats are outside of your control. You list out your strengths. It's important for you to know your strengths, know your weaknesses and how they work together. And then how can you use both your strengths and your weaknesses to create opportunities to move you to where you want to be? Uh, so it's really important that you assess your skills and, and you look at it from a standpoint of your strengths, your weaknesses, the opportunities, and then the threats or challenges uh, that you face. And, and that's how you begin to create this ongoing learning plan so that you can, you can actually move forward and implement uh, your, your goals, not only meet your goals, but exceed them. And then the last three points uh, before I, I share this, this model to set goals. or to be uh, learning based, continual, a student of the business, whatever industry you're in, always be learning. And it's also important for you to understand your market or your industry, and then master how to communicate with, with others. Make that a big part of your, when you're setting your goals, increase your communication skills, because you interacting and dealing with people is going to be one of the most uh, critical skill sets I believe that you have. So, so when you're looking at goals, 
I want you to think of smart. And this has been around forever. This is uh, a great tool, easy for you to remember. As you're setting your goals, whether I think it's important that you have uh, two or three business goals, and I think it's important that you have two or three personal goals, big goals that you're pushing for. So understand, all right, these are my two or three business goals. These are my two or three personal goals that are really important. And then sit down and, and this break down smart goals. You want to make sure your goals are specific, measurable, action oriented, realistic, and time bound. Let's talk about this for one quick second. Uh, I was doing this training once and I'll leave this up for a second and then I'll switch back to camera. I was doing this uh, training once in, in Monroe, Louisiana and an agent, this is real estate agents and a real uh, agent came up to me and she said, you know, I set a goal to do a hundred transactions last year and I hit it. I said, well, that's awesome. And she said, no, it's, it's, it's actually not. I said, well, why do you say that? Why is it not awesome? She said, well, because, I only are, my volume was about $2 million. I said, well, wow, how do you do a hundred transactions and you only do $2 million? She said, well, it's all small lots. I, I really understood I need to be more specific. So this year, my, my goal is to have a hundred transactions at the average sales price of $250,000 by December 31st of whatever year it was. This was probably seven or eight years ago. And she ended up hitting that goal the following year. But she learned a really valuable lesson. It is so important that you're specific. So don't just say, I want to make a lot of money or I want to have great relationships or uh, I want to have X amount of transactions or clients, whatever industry you're in, or I want to uh, attract X amount of people into my organization or whatever the goal is. It's important that you're very specific because the universe is going to send back what you ask for. So it's important that you're, you're very specific. Uh, and then it's also important that that goal is measurable. You can't really measure. I want to have great relationships. Um, you can't really measure. I want to make a lot of money, but you could measure. I want to earn, or I intend to earn $250,000 in the next 12 months. You could do that. Um, so it's got to be measurable. And, and the reason it's got to be measurable is because remember every week we're looking at our goals and we're saying what went right, what went wrong, what should I adjust or modify, what should I continue doing, what should I stop doing altogether. And, and if we are asking ourselves those questions and we have goals that we can measure, we can then adjust and course correct so that we move from where we are to where we want to be and we do it much faster. And then the A is action oriented. When you create a goal, you have to be able to put an action plan behind that goal. So I might be very specific and say in, in 2020, I want to have um, a better relationship with my wife. I want her to feel like she, I'm just, this is a goal of mine. And my wife and I have a fantastic relationship. We've been married 23 years. We have a 20 year old, a 16 year old and a two year old. Uh, so we still, uh, um, we still love each other greatly, but I want to have a phenomenal relationship with her and I want to take her on a date every week in 2020. That's, that's something I can set a goal. It's very specific to help us to make sure that we have a phenomenal relationship and we continue to date each other. So it's very specific. I want to take her on a date every week, at least once a week in 2020. I can, it's specific. I can measure it. I can put an action plan behind it. Here's, here's what we're going to do. I can plan out some of our dates in advance. Uh, and then I can go through and it's, that is realistic. And I've put a time on it. I want to do this in 2020 for once a week for 2020. Maybe it's a financial goal. I want to earn $250,000 by December 31st, 2020. And I can measure that. I can put an action plan behind it. It's very specific. Um, it, it would be realistic for almost anybody. And there's a, a timestamp on it. It's time bound. So it's really important. I think if you use that smart system, it will help you to plan out your, your, your goals. And then the last two things I want to show you, and then we'll wrap up, um, are real simple. There's this model for, uh, coaching and it is, it is called, um, I'm going to see if I turn 
There we go. Now, this whole time I haven't had this thing on. Sorry about that. Think of grow. And when you're thinking of grow and you're thinking of your, your goals and you're thinking of planning out how to crush 2020, the G does stand for goals. So take some time this last two weeks of December and write out your goals. I would write out your top 50 goals that you want to accomplish in 2020 and then drill down and what are your top two or three business goals and your top two or three personal goals, write, write them all out. Again, with clarity and focus, and then we're going to create a plan so that you can execute. And then the, the, uh, the R stands for reality. And what I want you to do is, is as you're writing out your goals, I then want you to ask yourself some questions like, what does my life look right now? What, what is my reality? Again, we don't want to buy into self-delusion. It's important to know where you are, to have this objective reality about where you are in, in life and in, in business. And then the O stands for options. What are my options? Are there other pathways to help me to get to where I want to be? What else could I do? What other avenues do I have to overcome this challenge or obstacle in my way? So what are my options? And then the W is will. What will you do? So ask yourself that question. You know, what, what will I do? What am I going to do in 2020? What am I going to do about it? What am I going to do about where I currently am? What am I going to do about whether or not I hit my goals? What am I going to do about the options that I listed? And I think if you use that grow model combined with setting smart goals, it will absolutely help you to begin to craft your plan to make sure that you uh, are have a written clear vision of where you're going and how you're going to get there. And then you execute that plan again with, uh, with excellence. And then the last thing that I want to share with you is how to create a quick growth plan. And again, I learned this from um, Darren Hardy and he, he's written a bunch of books and is publisher of Success Magazine, but he has something that he calls a one, three, five growth plan, a one, three, five growth plan. And, and what a one, three, five growth plan is, is where you sit down and you say, okay, um, you come up with a theme. That's the first thing. You come up with a theme. It's called a one, three, five growth plan. So as you're setting your goals, you look at what is your, your top goal. And you might create a growth plan for your personal goals and, and then create one for your, your business goals as well. You totally could do that. Or you could just have one and keep it simple. But you sit down and you, you go, what, what is going to be my theme for the first quarter of 2020? And maybe it is... Um, Let's just say, I'm going to say referrals. I'm going to stick to business and go, I want to increase my referrals. And so my theme is going to be referrals. Right? So what is the one big event? That's the one in the 135. What's the one big event that you're going to attend in the first quarter of 2020 that will help you to master referrals or whatever your theme is, lead generation, prospecting, communication, uh, you, you pick that, whatever that is. What's the one big event you're going to attend that's going to help you to build a better referral-based business? And then what are the three audio programs that you're going to listen to every day over and over and over again for the first quarter of 2020 that are going to help you build a referral based business. So maybe you go to audible on your phone or iTunes or whatever it is you use. Maybe it's a, a podcast that you, you listen to that's specific to referrals. Maybe it's an audio book that you listen to. Maybe it's a training that you have access to, to help you to increase your referrals. So what are the three audio programs that you're going to listen to? And then the five is what are the five books that you're going to read that are going to help you increase your referrals in the first quarter of 2020. 
So you list them out. You, you take a second, you go on Amazon, you do some research, you, you ask uh, some, some, uh, You ask uh, some some people that you know that have built a great referral based business. Hey, what are some of the books that you recommend? What 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 should I be reading right now? And then list those books out. You know, just you know, here's one, two, three, four, five. List those books out. And now, when someone gives you a book, what I do is whenever someone um, I create these growth plans and I do one every quarter. When someone goes, hey, here's a book that you should read. I'll take and go, hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm just going to put it in my, my bookcase or my book pile because I have a list of books that I'm reading and listening to uh, constantly. And I'm very intentional about creating that growth plan instead of jumping all over the place. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. And now you focus and you're, you're, it's easy for you have clarity. This creating this growth plan helps you because you have clarity to what you're trying to do that quarter, whatever you're trying to work on and grow. You have a growth plan. You have specific trainings you're listening to or audios you're listening to. You have specific books that you're reading and you're attending specific events uh, for that quarter to help you in that area. And then the second quarter, you create another growth plan and you create a different theme and you do the same thing. What big event this this quarter am I going to go to that's going to help me in this area? What are the three audio programs I'm going to listen to? What, what are the five books that I'm going to read that are going to help me uh, in, in this area? And if you do those things, I am positive that you will have the uh, absolute best, best 2020, the best year you've ever had in whatever industry you're in. Hey, thank you so much for watching tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for hopping on, whether the Facebook stream or if you're on Zoom. Uh, I will be uploading this to Patreon, and I'll be doing all my Sunday night classes again starting uh, this, uh, this Jan January, the first Sunday in January, and all those trainings will be on Patreon. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks for listening in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good info to help you out. Thanks so much. Have a great night.